This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Ready to talk some independent pro wrestling with a great, great guest uh, today. And I love different concepts in pro wrestling, but we'll get into that in a moment. In the meantime, please subscribe to this show and the others on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Network over on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. And also keep an eye we got live streaming on both those pages for Wrestling Mayhem Show, YouTube and Facebook. The interviews for this, the Indie Mayhem Show, often happen on the Facebook page. And you can join us live when you see a notification or see an event pop up for these. Or, of course, our, our, our review shows, the Midweek War and the Raw Wrap-Up over on YouTube Live. So I encourage you to subscribe and like all the pages so you never miss a minute of mayhem uh so and of course please support us on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show if you're liking the conversations that we're having and support all of our friends you heard at the top of the show uh with me i you know we got an email a little bit ago about an interesting concept and as you know we talked to uh the director here locally in pittsburgh of the elaborate entrance of chad deity and some other concepts and we've talked about them on the show in the past these these curious alternative wrestling ideas and we have jason static on the line with us right now of conquer pro wrestling it's doing something a bit different how you doing jason pretty good man how are you awesome uh so so before we get into conquer and what conquer is and obviously if you're involved in a project like this you gotta love wrestling right so the first question we like to ask is uh how did you like what's your kind of your first memory how'd you get into wrestling uh, first memory, uh, probably around four or five years old, just Saturday mornings, you know, in, you know, in front of the TV with mom watching uh, WWF, NWA, uh, you know, anybody like, you know, Snuka, Barry Windham, you name it, the 80s, the Road Warriors, all those guys, and just uh, got hooked on it from there. You can thank mom for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i love it with like the mom or the grandma is, is is the influence to get somebody into pro wrestling uh for stuff like mm-hmm. that so um so tell me a little bit about conquer pro wrestling it's it it's kind of an independent pro wrestling but you're doing something a little bit different how do you describe it uh what i like to call it is uh, the first time ever crossover of the arts between performing arts and professional wrestling. So it's uh, one big story where the actors and wrestlers are sharing the stage and the ring, uh, the, the both their worlds, in one night. So where you know, actors are acting and wrestlers are wrestling. So that's the best I could describe it uh, for you. So, so, so tell me about a little bit. So you're you, like you're presenting this as an independent show. You do have wrestlers performing. Like, how does that cross over? Like, are the actors like the the announcers and things like that? Is is that how it works out? Yeah, good good point on that one. I mean, like, uh, yes. So uh, one of uh, one of the uh, actors, uh, his name is Benjamin Benya, a uh, pure actor who loves wrestling, like out of his mind, insane. He's an encyclopedia. And uh, when he was doing his audition, he was going for a couple of parts as as uh, the wrestling promoter and, uh, you know, um, uh, another, another guy on the side. And then finally, we were like, he was he was good, but we were just weren't, he wasn't clicking with the part. And we were like, hey, like, you do play-by-play, you know, you want to call a match. So he goes, sure, you know, and uh, so uh, he, we put him in front of a laptop computer. It's, it's, a, it's a dark match uh, between Neville and Sami Zayn on the internet and uh they say okay man just call the action so just put up the volume and i got a, I got a, i got my cell phone behind him and i'm i'm recording him and i'm listening to the, the, the stuff coming out of his mouth and he he sounded like you could give that guy a deal tomorrow to, to announce for nxt nice i mean he is that good he is that good and i just look i look at the director for a second and i was like i don't need to hear anymore that that's the play-by-play guy mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. And, so like this, this him, and then we have another part where it's a it's actually a guy who plays a, a blind wrestling promoter. Uh, so uh, you know he's like the guru type guy, like who everyone goes to, you know, just full of knowledge. And and that's a pure uh, actor's role. So I try to keep again like the physicality 
to the wrestlers. And that was the difference between the, uh, the, the elaborate entrance of Chad Beatty, where I saw a couple of highlights. And again, I, I, I never saw the play entirety. Actually, next month's going to be my first time watching the play. It's coming to Sarasota. Uh, but it's it just that was one thing that I believe it was lacking, that it didn't have full physicality. Mm-hmm. So, so again, you're kind of like leaning more towards like a re- you know a wrestling show versus a a play that happens in a wrestling ring, like like I believe that one does, right? So, well, it, um, leaning towards. I mean, honestly, I, I I'm trying to get uh, connecting the worlds, mm-hmm. and that's the difference between some people get confused a little bit. But uh, one of the one of the fears I had when I did the first one was I said to myself, what if the if the uh, wrestling fan is going to be bored in act one because he wants to see body slams and suplexes. Yeah. And what if the theater person, you know, the proper theater person maybe goes, Oh, that, that was a little bit too physical in, in, you know, in the, in act two of seeing, of seeing the body slams and suplexes. But, uh, everyone pretty much reacted the way, you know, it, it was, it, it came out perfect. I can't believe it. You know, I, I, it came out really well. You know, and watching some of the video that you posted, um, um, some some clips from from the performance on uh, the uh, Facebook event for this uh, interview, uh, which I'm showing some clips of it here on, on the show. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, I noticed you know you have the you have the matches, and then you do like a ringside interview. It felt a little bit you know up here we call it like you know the studio wrestling kind of thing, or the you know uh, uh, the the Georgia pro wrestling maybe maybe more in your area, mm-hmm. right? Where you you it's that studio wrestling kind of vibe to it a little bit, I, and you know you're, it seems like you're telling that story through the night as for as opposed to it being you know an ongoing promotions kind of connection, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. I'm just trying, you know, again, I'm trying to show the theater world, uh, you know, all aspects of, of pro wrestling for, for what I have, you know, to work with. So mm-hmm. like that, I believe that 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 scene that I showed you was from the first play. Uh, and uh, that part, I mean, we were in a three quarter thrust style theater. Uh, which is like that arena setting, which is was perfect. It wasn't like we had it where the ring, we have we had shows where the ring was on a stage, and that one was the floor was actually the stage, you know. And uh, it just we're just trying to show all the aspects of what we're working with, and you know, to to give the theater world. There's a lot of theater guys out there that honestly never gave pro wrestling a shot. That was their first time ever seeing anything like that. Mm-hmm. So just wanted to you know give it out there, you know. I, every time the first the first time where this kind of crossed my mind was and I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with Mike Kingston's uh, Headlocked comic book where it starts off with a kid that's a theater major that leaves school to go become a pro wrestler because he sees the connections there. Um, where did that kind of start with you for you know saying uh, there this would work great in a theater setting? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, perfect, man. I just in, about a, a year ago. I was losing a little bit of the buzz for actually continued wrestling. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been doing it over 15 years and right. I'm, you know, I, you know, I, I, I got to admit it. I was losing the buzz. A lot of people don't like to admit it, but I'm being truthful. I was. And, uh, I just started writing on my own, just writing different things and, and it had nothing to do with wrestling. Honestly, it had, it had to do with, you know, uh, fitness and Christmas and you name it, every topic under the, under the sun. And I, I contacted a, a local playwright, who's pretty popular. His name is Robert Wynn Anderson of the Garden Theater. And I said to him, you know, you mind meeting me? And I want to show you this, you know, this paper that I wrote. And he goes, yeah, no problem. He was really, you know, we met at a Starbucks, had a coffee. He looked at it and, you know, he read it and he goes, could you write this? And uh, I was like, yeah, well, we're going to play. It was just about maybe like a three page story, you know? And, uh, he, and I, I thought he was going to tell me it sucked. You know? <laughs> and he goes, no, he, he goes, no, it goes, actually, it's really good. And he invited me to a singing in the rain auditions on a Wednesday night at the theater uh, the following week. And I'm sitting down. He's showing. It was very similar to wrestling because he was in, he was auditioning uh, a part. You know, it was it was actually it was just it was someone doing a solo song. And uh, you saw different characters and right away. It was like watching guys interview, you know, doing promos and, and tryouts. You know, where it was like right away. It was like that guy's nervous. That guy's not confident. You know, you know that that one's moving around too much. You know that one has his hands in front of his face, and it was like no, no, maybe yes, and it was very similar to to a WWE or I- Impact tryout. You know that you would go that you would go to. So that was a similar similar uh, uh, 
standpoint. But what happened was uh, he goes, he, he's the one that introduced me to the elaborate entrance of Chad Didi. Because he goes, you wrestle. He goes, why don't you check this out? And when I checked it out, I, I saw every, I looked up every clip on YouTube of all the making and the, and the behind the scenes and, diff, and different productions and you name it. Uh, even Al Snow worked as one of the fight choreographers in one of the elaborate entrance of Chad Didi productions. And I was looking at everything, and the one thing it was missing was when I, I was watching actors lock up or actors doing a certain move. And I said, eh, it's not physical. It's not enough. It's not believable. Uh, the, the, again, the sets looked great. They had the, One of the sets had a big screen, like a Titantron. It looked really good. But just the one thing I just said it was lacking, in my opinion, from a wrestler's standpoint, was like, ah, no physicality. And then a, a light bulb popped up and said, why don't you write? You, you already know you could write. Write a play that you can put everything together, and and that actually got me hungry again for wrestling. That's great. That's great. So, um, how how long has this been running? You know, what's the response been uh, to this? And I guess the big question is, you know, do you see a lot of the 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 play population coming, or is it a lot of wrestling fans? Is it kind of fifty fifty? Uh, it's a it's a fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, the first production was June fourth of last year, and it, it ran in the uh, Orlando Shakespeare Center, which is that three quarter thrust theater that I showed you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that theater holds about four four hundred seats. Uh, we had three productions total. Uh, we actually went to the Garden Theater where the idea came from, where the ring was on stage. We we put it there. We were at the Wayne Dench Performing Arts Center and other all theaters that pretty much hold around three, four hundred seats. Uh, the reaction I'm going to tell you from uh, there's three things that people were saying uh, from the fans on theater and wrestling side, from the wrestlers, the actors, they were all saying a couple of things and they're all positive feedback. One thing was that hey, this is something totally different. The the second thing was this is very this is fun. This is, there's no, you know, everything was like teamwork and, you know, from, even from the actors and wrestlers standpoint, no one was competing, like where sometimes in the, in the wrestling locker room, it seems like sometimes there's not teamwork. Sometimes there's a lot of, you know, you pretty much, you get, you get there, you get your finish, you get, you get your shit in, you get paid, you go home and, you know, get over. And it's kind of like that, yeah, that happens, but it was more of a, a friendlier environment where everyone contributed. So, you know, that was different. Um, they all said from the fan to the performer on both sides, we would come again. We would work for you again. We, you know, and that was, these are all things that came, came together. Uh, the atmosphere again, like the, the, you know, the wrestlers were not used to uh, like certain locker rooms being, you know, the, you know sometimes you get changed in, in a bathroom or, you know, <laughs> or anywhere you could put your bag down. It was, it was different. And, uh, and the last thing was the, the, the current call. Now, not the DX current call, but the, the current call of, like, at the end of the scene of a play, the last scene is all the wrestlers are in the ring. And usually on curtain calls and theater atmospheres, everybody in the crowd stands up and gives you a standing ovation. So the wrestlers were, like, like, like baffled that, like, you have 400 people in the seats standing up, giving you a standing ovation at the end of the night. And like on an independent show, you ain't going to get that. No, You know, that's one thing that, that will, won't happen. You might get a, this is awesome chance, but standing ovation, very, very hard. That's awesome. That's great. So, so where are you at with this? Like what's kind of the future of this concept? Uh, I, again, I'm, what I would like to do, is to like I tell people I tell both of them again the being them in two two types of atmospheres the wrestling atmosphere and the theater atmosphere is to I like to say it create contribute create and contribute not to compete I don't want to compete with other indies or 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 to compete with another theater production it's to create something new to contribute to the community in theater communities pro wrestling communities. Um, I like to honestly, I'm going to say, focus on bringing it to a to the theater, you know, because it's more, it's a little over theater production than wrestling. I would not want to bring it to a high school gym. 
Right. I, I like the theater atmosphere. Um, I like to, if you know, anyone listening on in, in the promoter side and be it from, you know, the, be it from impact to the, you know, with the owl to any <laughs> indie out there anywhere nationwide, that's worth it. I, I like to say that it's an open door invite for anybody who would like to connect and work together that the opportunity in, 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 is out there. And just to say for people who have not, you know, I'm on the wrestling side who have not experienced this, it's something that you have to give a look at. You can't just overlook because if you watch it, say the match that actually you have there, listen, listen to the crowd, the crowd pops for the referee coming out. The crowd pops <laughs> of a wrestler going through a curtain without hitting a lockup or taking a bump. It's a, it's a different world of the theater people who, who, you know, towards a regular wrestling fan. Nothing wrong with the regular wrestling fan. Hey, if they weren't there, we wouldn't be working at all. But if you want to tap into a new world and even bring more people into your shows, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see this. And please, if you like it, hit me up because yeah. it's, I believe it's worth it. That's great. Uh, it sounds like an awesome thing. So, so tell me, what are you watching these days that maybe influence you in, in wrestling, or maybe things you you hope to bring over to this? What's kind of catching your 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 attention, whether it be certain wrestlers or certain promotions out there? Well, can you repeat that, please? It came in a little foggy. On that oh, that's all right. Uh, connection issues. Uh, but uh, what are you, what are you watching these days that uh, are kind of inspiring you or catching your attention in pro wrestling? Uh, you know, I, I used to like, I, I watch a little of everything. I mean, you got to watch the products out there. I mean, like, you know, be it from, if it's ROH to, you know, Impact, which again, right now it's in Florida, it's tough to get unless you got pop, but you know, you got to get it, you know, pretty much you can get everything on the internet. Uh, NXT is cool, but I, I used to, again, from the wrestling standpoint, you know, I, I was big tapes, studying tapes throughout the night. Looking for the for the next arm bar for, for the, the next chain wrestling hole that's never been done or hasn't been done in a while. Uh, I kind of changed that a little bit where it's more. Uh, I'm looking at things from a, from storytelling standpoint of more looking at different finishes or different stories. You know, just again, it's a storytelling business. But you know, again, just to to look at that and hey, take take little things of everything and not saying steal it, but you know, make it your own. Let, let those light bulbs. I'm, I'm watching everything. You get, you got. It's awesome. Um, what is uh, you know? Of course, you say you've been in the wrestling uh, uh, business for for a good good while now. Um, what's? Let me switch it up a little bit because uh, I usually ask what's the best mm -hmm. and worst thing about independent pro wrestling. But what's the best and worst thing about pro wrestling on the theater side? The best and worst thing. Oh man. Uh, and the best thing I got to say from, 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 from what I'm experiencing is, is the reactions, mm -hmm. the pops. It's just, it's just listening to the crowd. Uh, it, it, everything, honestly, from the locker rooms, from, from the different types of locker rooms, from the different settings. I mean, working on shows in, you know, in theater, I mean, like it's just even, even the music setup, the lighting, uh, just having all those little extra theater things added on into your wrestling show. It, it eliminates the high school gym atmosphere. That's the, that's the, the, the best thing I could say of what I like about it. Uh, worst, worst thing. Oof. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that maybe just putting maybe the, 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 the time, the, the time to, to do this stuff mm -hmm. where it's, it, it's a lot of time. It's, it's not like you could just get in there quick you know and i'm looking at it from from a from a writer standpoint now you know again it's a little easier on the boys coming in getting your finish you know i'm still trying to make it as easy as possible for them but it's just the setup of doing more in, uh, to make it special <laughs> you know it's just it, it's it's straining but it's worth it that's awesome uh so what's coming up where can people check out uh, uh conquer online or if they're in the area for you Okay, well, you got the Facebook page, Conquer Pro, look up CPW, We Don't Play Fight. Um, Twitter, at Conquer, all capital letters, and then PW. Um, if you want to look up for the shows coming up, we have 
four shows lined up in May at the Orlando Fringe Festival, which is a huge, huge, about 10, no joke, 10,000 people, 14 days straight of performing arts, all theater, uh, multiple theaters, beer tents, food trucks. It's, it's, it's a huge festival. It's like the WrestleMania of theater. And uh, to get information on that, you go to orlandofringe.org. We have four shows lined up, which is we are opening up on May 20th uh, at 1245 in the afternoon. May 23rd, 715 show. May 26th, I don't know if you ever seen a show start at midnight. <laughs> and May 28th at 430 is the finale. The 28th show is going to be mostly wrestling so we're kind of trying to and each show is different unlike every theater show if you go you know you see a normal theater show it's just okay the same show four times straight uh you're gonna have four different shows the three shows are pretty much like let's say watching monday night roller or nxt you know three weeks straight and then you have the nxt takeover the big pay-per-view it's kind of going to, it's going to be like leading up to that. So it's like, if you're going to see it for the first time, you'll get, you know, it'll be cool for you, but you're probably going to want to come back to see the second one and the third one, because it's going to be a little of everything. Awesome. Go check it out. It's a really cool concept. I'm glad to see these new takes on pro wrestling and indie wrestling happening all over the country here. Uh, so please go check them out, especially if you're in the area for that and check out everything online, follow them as they, uh, hopefully grow here. So, uh, so <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, and again, if you want to follow, uh, indie wrestling, what we're talking about over on wrestling, And of course, a lot of great stuff happening over at indie wrestling.us and, uh, follow everything on the social media and on the, on all the video and uh, 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 podcast venues that we have, the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, thank you so much to my guests this week. And remember, until next time, support indie wrestling and I guess indie theater as well. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.